Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Diaspora Chiefs podcast. I'm your host, Victor Osio. Today, I have an amazing human being with us on this episode. She's amazing. She's intelligent. She's brilliant. She's very clever and witty as well. She's an expert. So we have um, Panagata Pimendu. Did I get it right? Yeah, it's uh, the fir- you got absolutely fine the first name. It's Pimenidu. It's the last one, but thank you. Uh, Thank you oh, for great, welcoming great, great. me. Yeah. See, from, from, from your bio and from what we've actually discussed, I see that um, you, because my audience, we are, most of my audience, we are Africans and Caribbeans who moved to, who are living in, not in their birth country, and are making a way for themselves by transiting from the hardcore nine to five to, um, to be more digital entrepreneurs and a lifestyle of freedom for themselves and their family. So I see that you are a lecturer in chemical engineering in Leeds. How did you, how, what, what, what it is, so before then, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm, um, I don't have really any relation to Africa. I'm actually Greek. Uh, but I'm also an expat. I moved first to the UK to uh, study chemical engineering and then I returned to Greece and for various reasons I realized that I would like to continue to the academia. So I moved back to the UK to do my PhD and since then I'm uh, in the academia. I pursued an academic career. Um, But it's funny because over the years, uh, many things have changed back to Greece. When I first, uh, when I returned to the UK, uh, Greece's financial situation was pretty much good, even though the chemical industry was not as developed. So as a chemical engineer, I couldn't really find a proper chemical engineer's job back home. Since I moved back to the UK in uh, 2007, uh, three years later in 2010, a big financial crisis hit Greece. Uh, People started to lose uh, a great part of their income. Uh, The salaries and pensions were reduced. Unemployment rose. And since 2010, a great influx of Greek professionals, including people who had university degrees or PhDs, uh, started to move to Europe, to the rest of Europe, to the United States. In the past five years, I can see more and more Greeks coming to the UK who wish to pursue a career, uh, not as specialists, but even for working in services or working in construction, or working as mechanics. And um, maybe there is a bit of similarity there between people who move from Africa to abroad and between the Greeks who move abroad, simply because they cannot really find good opportunities to have a good life, to develop uh, financially and professionally in their own countries while at the same time uh, younger Greeks do not have the mentality of the winner. Uh, When they move abroad, they come mostly just to get a nine to five job. Sometimes, and this is my perspective, sometimes even by devaluing uh, the real potential or uh, not really seeing the opportunities that are given to them while they're here. You spoke about devaluing people, devaluing their the devaluing themselves to because they can't actually find the right opportunities. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think it's the modality because they have been exposed to really a negative um, a negative environment, a negative atmosphere in Greece over the past years. That things are not really getting any better. That despite their efforts of uh, Um, persisting, uh, staying in their country, still they couldn't really find these right opportunities. And in a sense, it appears that they started to lose hope of something better happening. 
and because they're not really looking forward to something better, uh, they feel that they might need to adjust their needs. They might need to adjust their dreams. And uh, then the behavior changes by not really fighting for something better, but just taking what is offered to them. So when a person lose, loses hope, and then when people stop dreaming, uh, this is when they uh, do not really see any opportunities happening around. Uh, they do not see things positively or even creating their own opportunities, simply because they lost trust in themselves. And uh, this is something that really needs to be done. And it's not always easy, especially if you're used to think um, negatively uh, for a long period of time. So this requires some sort of self-work to start um, looking back to what is important to you as a person, what your values are, what you're really looking forward to. And once you identify those core values that you might have forgotten for different reasons, then you might start focusing on what you can really do, uh, what you really want and how you can really get it. Great, great, great. I really, I really like the part where you mentioned about creating opportunities for themselves. Now you are in the, you are in a very unique position now to create. You are creating opportunity for yourself by um, starting a podcast or starting an avenue to reach out to to Greeks worldwide. So can you just tell us a little bit about that and what was the mindset behind that? Um. It's funny because people just see the uh, the picture, the image of a person and they think, okay, since this person has this position in the academia or in the industry, they might be really successful. Uh, but from my side, I have also uh, got stuck at some point. Uh, I didn't create that many opportunities for myself too. And then uh, the podcast was an idea of uh, self-expression, of uh, communicating with people, maybe not redefined, but realigning myself to my core values. And by having conversations with uh, Greeks who are professionals living abroad or who have lived abroad, I'm uh, learning through their own personal experiences and through their own journeys in life of how they deal with uh, many aspects I have to deal with. And at the same time, the audience might also benefit from those conversations or they might start seeing opportunities by knowing that a person does this job or these are their life goals and they might contact them just by listening to their conversations with me. So all in all, I think the podcast was first of all, the um, a self-expression uh, mean, uh, secondly, to learn from uh, my interviewees, thirdly, to connect with different Greek professionals all over the world. And just by knowing one another, the human element in our lives is not really given as much value as we think we might think it really has. Once you connect with a person, you might realize that you have something in common with them, you connect with them, and then you create a very nice basis of uh, maybe having a, a collaboration. So um, I think overall, uh, it's important to express ourselves, to really put ourselves out there and say what we think, what we want. And through our own dreams, other people might get inspired and then we can join, we can join forces. Great, that is, that is an amazing, that's an amazing take on that. So you are, you are currently, transition but you see 
from from your background as an academia into venturing into something that you are not really you're not really sure about but you just went there for your passion's sake because you want to like connect you want to you want to create opportunity self-expression what was your actual mindset can you tell us any roadblock how did you get through that well it wasn't really failures i think that even failures come from within us uh, we prevent ourselves of not uh, accomplishing our dreams we might think that we are not good enough that we don't have the enough resources we don't have a good network and um, i think the answer to that is action and this is what i thought about the podcast because i was in a position that before the podcast i was not really happy with what was happening uh, to me professionally or even personally and uh, through podcasting i gained the mindset of being active of becoming an action doer as you might say mm -hmm. um, and only if we make actions on a daily basis towards our dreams only then we will bring hope to our lives we will see that every single step matters and can bring us to our final goal and along these daily steps we also gain more experiences than just simply uh, being motionless and staying stagnant in life without taking any action um, so all in all um, the podcasting experience my mindset before the starting the podcast and my mindset now while I'm doing the podcast has really helped me to take active steps every day and to be more proactive in what I want to achieve okay that is that, that, that's a fine thing because you know most of the time for my community or people some of the listeners or my media on this what they are struggling with is being, like you rightly said, being motionless. You just, you have a dream, you just freeze. And then you do, you, 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 are just, you can you live a happy life being a lecturer, just be going and be going and be going. But you decided, you know what, I need to like connect because of my conversation with fellow professionals. And you know their frustration, you know what, you know the potential that most of them have. And it being um, devaluing themselves and without and the lack of self-expression that they carry every day of not being able to live their, their their true self i believe that is why that is why i started this podcast conversation so why did you start why did you go into this journey of just like you need to like actually broadcast the conversation with fellow professional greeks worldwide uh, because we have a common background and uh, because we have a common culture and I think these uh, common ways of thinking to a greater or to a lesser extent uh, to each one of us might have affected our journey and then we can really see uh, the common things we might have succeeded or the common failures uh, and we might find common patterns or even if we don't find those common patterns we can still identify and really be more connected to actions towards success from one another and very funny because through my interviews with very successful people to my eyes I mean if you're going to see their list of accomplishments uh, when I was having a personal conversation with them, they still didn't feel that they have achieved enough or they haven't done enough. And it's amazing. Even when I interviewed yesterday, I interviewed you yesterday, I thought, oh my God, uh, Victor has such an amazing story. He has come such a long way through his life to being here and taking this action. And people don't really see what they have accomplished in life. And in general, we should be more thankful uh, by looking back to our life's journey 
and pat ourselves on the shoulder, saying to ourselves, you've done very well. You actually took actions towards having a successful life, towards happiness. And it's good also to recognize to one another how well we've done, because just by seeing how other people see us, we can have a flavor of what we also have achieved in life. I had amazing conversations with people who have come a very long way in their lives. They have accomplished so much, and yet they might not recognize that to themselves. Maybe, and I hope maybe that's because they are really looking forward to the next steps towards uh, their life journey. At the end of the day, I would say that we did very well. And if there's something that we don't like in our lives and we want to change it, we just maybe just go for it without overthinking about it, without overthinking all these ifs and buts and what other people might say or what they might think about us. We'll just simply have to go for it because at the end of the day, we we are the only ones who take care of ourselves. Yeah, because when we when when we're speaking before you mentioned you mentioned overthinking. So was overthinking or questioning yourself was 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 it like a setback or was it like an hindrance to you before you took this 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 step out? Yes, of course it was an obstacle. I was creating an obstacle to myself just by overthinking because I was presenting to myself uh, a list of things that I should be aware of uh, that in order to make myself feeling safer. And uh, the, all these things that I started to think about as things to be careful about uh, were preventing me from taking steps forward so overthinking is what is called maybe today procrastination that you mm -hmm. overthink that over research things instead of just saying yeah these are the couple of things i need to consider when i'm going to uh, do my actions in the next few days and then i will see how this will go and based on the outcomes within the next few days, I will readjust. You cannot really plan ahead uh, for the next month. Um, and if you do that, this means that you're not really trusting yourself or maybe you're creating um, barriers around you of not really achieving what you want to achieve. Then one might think, why should one put obstacles to themselves, to himself or to herself? And this means that at some point in our lives, we have been, um, we might have been told that, you know what, you have to be more careful. In a sense, like they said to us, oh, you shouldn't really be trusting yourself as much, you should be more careful. And I would say that if we have any hesitance in our lives, it doesn't come from us. It, most of the cases, it comes from what other people have projected to us. That's very, that's, that's very insightful. So for, so now you've taken action, and you've actually, you're actually doing what you set out to do. Now, what would you advise, um, a professional like yourself who is sitting on the fence tell us how rewarding it is and what would you tell them to go forward what, 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 what would be your advice for them well i'm on my way uh to what i want to do and i don't really want to stop now uh, uh this means that i have to be aware of that and constantly reminding myself to go for it. So I would say to everyone who wants to follow his or her dreams to go for it, 
and to remind themselves to go for it every single day and every single moment. Because every single action I have taken made me feel happier than ever before. And when I started to do things, then I realized how important it is to do things and take action. You can see the progression, the gradual accomplishment, uh, things being ticked off your list. Um, and I think also at the same time, people who might not feel accomplished uh, might not be because they have not done things in their lives. It's also maybe because they haven't been, uh, they haven't developed uh, themselves as much as they want to. And the ultimate goal of a human in this life is to develop and to constantly develop throughout his or her life. And if we don't do that, we feel unhappy. Uh, so development is very important. And it's not just the things we accomplish, but our journey through life. And as long as we unfold and reach our true selves, uh, the happier we feel. So what does, what does, let me ask you just one, one very tactical question now, and it has to do with, uh, it has to do with your success. What, what is one tactic that you use that has been the biggest impact on your success or moving forward towards your passion? To ignore negative comments or negative behaviors and then just try to be as sensible as possible by isolating my mind and focusing on the things I want to do regardless of the environment around me. In a sense that to have a very strong connection to my true values and then say, no matter what, I'm going to do this. So it's mostly about the mindset of persistence, discipline, uh, rather than uh, an action itself. For example, people might say, yes, I have a ritual. I do yoga every morning. Yes, of course, if this is what help someone, this is what they should do to gain clarity, to gain focus. In my case, it's the constant reminder of not listening to negative comments or over judgmental comments. I'm listening to critiques because you might get some useful information out of that uh, and be persistent and stubborn. That's great. That's great. That can that can that can be better because the more the more we progress on our journey towards what we really want to do or what we like or what we love, the more happier we are. Because I am very happy doing doing this podcast, pushing myself, talking to you, talking to people of different background, people of different stories. You you like you rightly said, you never know how how successful you are, you, but you should at least pat yourself in the back and say, yes, I've done well. And it takes a certain mindset to get to that realization that, yes, I've actually done this. Wow, really? Yeah, I've actually done this. This is something nice, this is something great, but I've achieved. What would you say about, sure, you've already said it, so, but if you can throw more light on it, that would be great. Yeah, for example, I'm going to give you a story of uh, back when I was 31 years old, which was when I decided, actually when I was 30 years old, when I decided to do a PhD. So I was already at an age of 30. I didn't have any family. I didn't have any, I, I didn't have a partner. I didn't have a stable job back in Greece. But because I realized I really want to do research and follow an academic career, I started to look for scholarships for my PhD. Uh, I didn't say it to anyone. I didn't share my uh, dream with anyone. I just went for it because I didn't want to uh, hear all these voices of saying, yeah, but you're 30 years old. Maybe you should be more focused on your personal life, like what you're going to achieve. You're going to have a family a child and maybe just 
accept where you are now. Just accept it. But I just went for it. And when I announced that I'm going abroad, I'm going back to the UK to, uh, to do my PhD, most of the people were like surprised because it would have been difficult to them to say, you know what, at the age of 30 years old, it's not the wisest thing to do. Yeah. You, you're already at the latest stage in your life. You're not like any longer 20 or 18 years old. Um, thankfully, my family was very supportive. I remember even my mom saying, you know what, even if you had a child, you could have gone to do your PhD and I could have taken care of things, which was very nice of her. Uh, but generally speaking, yeah, in a sense, I just shut out uh, all these negative comments. And then I thought, okay, I'm just going to go for it. And then I will just let them know. I'm not sure if this was like so great. Um, definitely if I had a partner who was very close to me, I would have let him know that I'm in the process of looking for uh, living abroad for at least three years. Uh, but this is one of my stories. When I tried to um, avoid any negative comments, but back then I would say I was more sensitive to uh, to negative comments than I am now. Now I'm quite thick-skinned. I have a much thicker skin than I used to. Yeah, because I was going to ask you that and say, you know, because what, like people from we Nigerians, we like we still think about what would what would people say, what would this say, what would that say? People back home, do you ever think about that, or does that does that happen in your culture? Um, Greece is a small country, and most of the cities in Greece are not do not have a population of over thirty or forty thousand people. This means that chances are, you know, most of the people who live in your city. So, so well, Talk kind of. Pressure. Okay, I don't know. That is that is pressure. <laughs> that okay, is pressure. maybe I don't know everyone in the city. Maybe I just know a hundred people. But um, you understand that the smallest a society is, uh, the easier it is for them to communicate with you and express their thoughts. Um, I was quite um, lucky that my family was slightly more uh, more liberal uh, than other families. So uh, they wouldn't allow even uh, people who were close to them to make any comments about me and my sister of what we are doing in our lives. So for example, my father never ever told me, when are you going to get married? Um, yeah. Of course, maybe this was something that he thought about, but he never really expressed it openly to me or my sister. Yeah, that's a great similarity as well. A great similarity with us. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, yes, people are quite expressive and because they're quite expressive, societies are smaller. Uh, it's very easy to listen to these um, um, critiques or negative comments more often than you would if you live in London or even if you live in a large neighborhood in London. Yes, there is a lot of intervention in that sense. And the Greek families are also very close to one another. And sometimes this closeness uh, translates into interventions like to know what your children are doing and you have an opinion to anything your child does. Yeah, that is that is it is the same with with most African parents and most African families. The the, the the intervention comes sometimes they are good, sometimes they are not that good because you're kind of be meddling in other people's business. So and the pressure of being of the pressure of a family member being single is in, in in African culture, we have to like start to like we go to we go to church and start praying for them, the mom, the dad, who start like asking and quarreling and but you know what? 
it has stopped people from actually doing what they want to do. That has had lots of negative influences in in an individual life to like pursue pursue their goals because if you had if you had listened or if you had allowed those negative feedbacks to go deep into your subconscious it might not allow you to go and do your phd so that's how it is in our community as well so we have this that is a very strong cultural similarity with diaspora so yes, maybe people who are not parts of, who are not parts of my who are not members of my family, uh, they might have just uh, made comments. Now, when it comes to the parents or uh, to family members, uh, to us it's more about projecting their expectations. So it, it's like we override our own expectations over other people's expectations uh, and I think definitely the uh, families have a different effect on us than just comments of peers or comments of friends or of acquaintances uh, they definitely have a stronger effect on us yeah so um, Geta, can you just tell us about your what your podcast is all about and this passion that you're chasing what it's all about um, as I mentioned slightly earlier on, it's about connecting Greeks, but also maybe not even Greeks. If, uh, the, uh, the audience was initially uh, supposed to be Greek professionals who live abroad. Uh, it's people who have uh, succeeded in life, who might have also had some failures, who are going to give to an audience an insight of uh, their life journey and what we can learn from their life journeys. At the same time, I would guess that any other uh, people from other backgrounds could also listen to those conversations simply if they think that uh, they can have a different perspective in their own lives based on somebody else's culture. But then, as you say, uh, it looks like at the end of the day, we have many more similarities mm -hmm. than we might have thought we did. Um, and it's down, and everything goes down to the human nature, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen, even from meeting people uh, like you or other people in our groups, uh, is that despite our life journeys, despite our backgrounds, despite our age, um, we have many common things uh, to our personalities and characters. Even though we follow different paths in life, we meet now because it looks like we have an alignment of purposes and goals. And this is very important for everyone to see. That's great. I would I would love to listen to your podcast and what is the name of your podcast and where can we look for it? Where can we find it? It's called Global Greek Influence and it seems like that was the first idea in a sense to see how uh, Greeks through their personalities or through their uh, mentality they might have affected a profession differently and uh, maybe led to different ways of seeing a profession or seeing a career or some results within this area of uh, profession uh, but it seems like it's more than that yes absolutely it's always it's, it's always more than that it's always more than that so what, what what are your plans for the next 90 days what are the next 90 days go for us well, I'm uh, hoping I'm going to complete many of the plans I have for now, like at work, I'm uh, planning to have an exchange of students between uh, the chemical engineering department in Bradford and the Greek university uh, to plan some field trips for our students for uh, sustainable energy uh, abroad after their exams 
to bring uh, some PhD students from abroad to do their PhDs with me here in Bradford. I live in Leeds, but I work at the University of Bradford. And of course, to uh, produce more episodes for the podcast and see what's going to come out of that. For example, if I'm going to have some uh, more collaboration with people and uh, definitely I'm looking forward to meeting more amazing people. Yeah, that's good, that's good. So what, 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 can you just one last question before you go? What are your three uh, favorite tools that you can't live without? Tools like items? Yeah. So like, yeah, like anything, uh, three favorite tools that you can't live without. Well, definitely, I think as most of us, I cannot live without my phone. Yeah. Which is very important. I live abroad, so it's very, um, it's very uh, comfortable to connect with the people I love and um, I'm interested in through my phone. Uh, then one other tool that I should quit is uh, smoking cigarettes. Okay. It's actually cigarettes, so I should quit them at some point. So the three tools I'm, uh, I'm using uh, mostly and I can't live without are definitely my phone, my mobile phone, just to connect with uh, the people I love and I'm interested in uh, as I live abroad and they also live far from the UK. The second tool that I'm going to quit soon is our cigarettes. Uh, I'm quite a heavy smoker at the moment. Uh, I'm not such a great drinker, but um, uh, I smoke quite a lot. And the third tool, if one could consider this to be a tool, is to talk to myself from time to time. Just to remind uh, myself what are the important things to me. and. Um, Yes, it's like having a conversation with my inner voice, my inner voice who is constantly worrying and um, that voice that actually tells, to, still says to me of uh, all the things I need to consider, but I'm just trying to convince this voice to calm down as uh, only by taking action I can make things better and without overthinking. Yeah, that is good because it is it's actually it's actually a very good thing to talk to yourself, but you need to know what to say when you're having that conversation. So I uh, quite because we spend most of our time with ourselves, so you should be your own best friend. Should be your own best friend. So on the on, on the last note, I know we're about to like round it up now. I would see, I don't know, I don't really experiment with food, but I would like you to like just recommend a great Greek food for me. So when I go out in London, I just where, where should I go? And if I see a Greek a Greek menu, what should I look out for? Um, I think you should definitely try Greek gyros, which is like a nice fluffy pita bread, not like the ones they sell at the supermarkets, which are quite hard which is stuffed with uh, shaved pork or shaved um, chicken. And one might think, yeah, this sounds uh, very simple in taste, but trust me, it's very um, tasty. It's delicious actually. And um, there are many, many nice uh, Greek spots in uh, London, very nice. Uh, Greek pop-up restaurants recently where you can taste um, original food because in the past there used to be all these Greek restaurants in uh, different countries which whose food did not really resemble what you would get in Greece but right now there are many nice restaurants in London where one can try all these flavors and they're more uh, they're much closer to the original flavors that's great. That's great. So you call it it's a Greek Greek euros. Yes. Right? Greek euros. So it's shaved chicken or pork. Okay, check yeah. Shaved chicken or pork. I will try that. And I will recommend one for you. Try 
the Nigerian jollof rice. Go there, just try the Nigerian jollof rice in, anywhere in Leeds or Bradford, anywhere. I'm actually going to yeah. look it up. Yes, yes, for yeah, sure. Yeah, the Nigerian jollof right. rice. Yeah, don't tell my Ghana people that. What the Nigerian jollof rice <laughs> is the best. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Giota. I I really enjoyed having this conversation with you, and I wish you all the best in your journey and for Greek influence worldwide. I just want you guys to go listen and. Yeah, interact. We have so much in common than meets the eyes. So thank you very much for having for having spent your time with us this afternoon. Thank you, Victor, for having me. Thank you for the great conversation. Yeah. So my diaspora shifts, you can go listen to Global Greek Influence. It's available on iTunes, on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever there is a podcast app, just go there type in global greek influence and you take a listen give us some reviews give us some feedback and subscribe to our podcast thank you very much <laughs>